you hear me? Can you hear me? Should I just talk like this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's the royal voice. <laughs> if you must insist, then we shall. In the meantime, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to explain how magic works in Equestria. Uh, I'm insane, I'm crazy, or I'm just plain obsessive compulsive to the point I have to have every single question answered. I don't know which one. Uh, next. Magic sign. So, who am I? I am Fiora. Also, I play Queen Quake at BabsCon, hence why I can project all the way out of the room and into the hallway. And, uh, this is, uh, Tread Lightly. My subscribers sent this to me on Wednesday without telling me. Uh, I have been in the field of human sexuality and communications for seven years. I have a master's degree in communications specialized in human sexuality, i.e. I can tell you about your love life, I can tell you how to find the perfect mate, or I can tell you how to not break up your marriage, or if you should break up your marriage anyway, because there's no hope. Um, all of these panels I am doing for science were inspired by Diamond Doodle, who is the executive, uh, found, one of the executive founding board members of BabsCon, and she's the reason I'm doing all this, so it's Doodle's fault. So, to begin, I'm going to explain this. There is kind of a tier hierarchy system in how magic works, i.e., tier 1 is trumped by tier 2, tier 2 is trumped by tier 3, so on and so forth. We have cutie mark magic, the lowest form of magic that permeates all equestrian life, believe it or not, out, even outside of ponies, because their cutie marks directly relate to how they interact with everything else. Unicorn magic, all unicorns have this, it's very basic. Every, every single one of them has it. It's like they have a slightly deeper connection to magic, and if you were for here for the age panel, you know that means that they also apparently have a longer life. Alicorn magic, semi-demigod level magical capability. You can raise the sun, you can raise the moon, you can control people falling in love with you or other people, and you can control friendships. So you're not quite level of Zeus, but you're kind of up there with Hermes. Discord magic, near godlike level. Problem though, he has a bunch of limitations that prevent him from being godlike. Pinkie Pie, which has her own panel to explain this. <laughs> Otherwise, this will be a two hour panel. And friendship magic, god's like cosmic altering power of oh my god, where did this come from, Dragon Ball Z? <laughs> and the last thing here is is the magic actually alive? And if so, is it a symbiotic, parasitic, or ambionic relationship? Uh, yeah. I will take questions at the end. Okay. So, cutie mark magic. All of them have one. Every one of them. It doesn't matter who it is. All of them will get one eventually. But it's only ponies. It's only ponies. There's a reason for that. See, we see this. Changelings don't even get it, and they're the same shape as ponies. Griffins don't get it, and Discord certainly, certainly doesn't ever need a cutie mark, because that would be horrifying. <laughs> so, what are you going to be good at, and what are you going to do? What this magic is doing is effectively placing you in a place in the society as well as the world itself. We see examples of ponies who are isolated, and the reason they're isolated is because their cutie marks put them in isolated positions, or they feel that they've been slighted for friendships. At the same time, you can misinterpret this mark. That's the whole point of the cutie mark crusaders, is to explain what that means. So, apparently, Equestrian Magic has a plan for every single pony born to some degree. Whether that plan is felt out through I know what I'm doing with you the moment you're born, or you're going to have to figure it out and so am I. I'm not entirely clear on yet, but I'm pretty sure it's the latter rather than the former. Because most ponies simply try out stuff until they find something that they're awesome at, and then the magic goes, you! You're going to do that the rest of your life. Um, and cutie marks themselves have changed and evolved to be better understood by those who have them. For example, has anybody taken a good look at Twilight's cutie mark? I wish I had a picture of this right now. But you notice it's six stars. One really big star surrounded by five smaller ones. You would think that that is, actually this little girl here. Perfect example. You would think that that is a cutie mark to either indicate an astronomer or someone really good at magic. But no, it was for something else. 
something that was still brooding and forming and wasn't quite there yet, and we see it in the form of friendship magic. Next slide. So, if equestrian magic is alive, I can't tell if it's sentient or not, but I'm working under the assumption that it is a living entity, then cutie marks are treated like different parts of the body. Different cells for different specialized jobs, whether that's to interact with the animals, or to chain, or to interact with ponies, or to interact with the earth, or to interact with the sky. It all depends upon what the body needs at the moment that it turns the ponies into the specialized job that they do, much like bodies, much like cells in your body. And each one can slightly change or alter as they grow older. They get better at it. They find new uses for it. They create entirely new worlds and concepts around figuring out what they mean. So, and it's prevalent in every single pony. It exists throughout them, which means that something about the ponies and about Equestria itself are linked to get together. Because we don't see it in other mythical creatures. We don't see it in Manticores. We don't see it in Cerberus. T-Rex most certainly doesn't have one. I mean, I, I went over as many creatures as I could. None of them have this. Why? They have magic, but they don't have this. What's going on here? So, we get into unicorn magic which is the very basic form of magic that most ponies have access to outside of cutie mark magic. Which means if you're an earth pony or a pegasi, you have a different form of specialized magic, either interacting with the earth itself and the land itself, or interacting with the sky. But here we have something different. It's not specialized to do one thing. It does whatever their minds can think of, which is a perfect example of a body having a mutation from exercise. When you exercise, you break down cells. Those cells die. Your body then rebuilds new cells and more of them or stronger cells to create muscle mass. Same principle with magic, apparently. The more they use it, the better they become at it. And they're only specialized to use certain types of magic in some cases. Rarity can't really do teleport spells all the time. But by God, she, can she sew like nobody's business. Twilight can teleport around like crazy, but Starlight Glimmer can blast her out of existence. <laughs> Why? They all have access to the same magic, apparently, but it works differently because they're different specializations within that field of magic to create the different parts of the living body of magic. Next slide. So, clip one. Clip one. So, Rarity is literally doing this by pattern, by the way. She knows this by heart. She can sit there and just think about it and sing a song. But here's how innate this is. It's so integrated into their bodies that a less than one-year-old can do it. And this might just be me, but that's ridiculously powerful. I don't know about you, but if you've ever held your arm out like this with 40 pounds, it's really hard. Also, what? 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 False. What was that? How did you just turn someone into a chain gun? Because Pinky. I demand an answer! Uh, because Pinkie Pie. Yes! This is why she has her own panel! I have to explain this! So, again, it's restricted based upon their cutie marks. If their cutie marks are specialized for something besides magic, the magic only really works for them for what it's specialized for. Otherwise, you have ponies like Rarity, or example, ponies like Fluttershy who can barely fly. And then we have clip two. But unicorn magic isn't very powerful at all. It can do a lot of different things, and it can do some incredibly weird stuff. And the weird stuff mostly comes from uh, that one. I have an entire panel that's devoted to technology of ponies. How? And I'll let this play for a second, just to sh show you everything that's going on here. And you all assume it's electricity. 
And I'll give you that, it looks like it's electric. But there's going to be one fault here after this that you're going to see. I'm going to be late for the wedding. That's what hell of a battery. That is, that is the biggest battery. That is like three car batteries minimum. To get enough amps and watts to power that. Oh dear God, that's yes. But uh, but back back to the slides. I have to point this out. Hold on, right, right here, right here. What? What? And it's every single wire in the show. There are no electrical outlets anywhere. No one keeps those things, man. The wires are all free hanging. What's going on? How do you do electric? Energy over the air, Tesla. I, 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 but here's the thing I really noticed. Leftover technology from a bygone era. Most of the technology that we see is used by unicorns. They're fueling it. Back to the previous slide. So. Unicorn magic is highly predictable, but it's also the weakest tier of magic we have. By far, unicorn magic is at the bottom of the list when it comes to, if someone wants to come in like Discord or a princess and say, stop that, it stops. Next slide. Next slide. So, uh, demi the, 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 the demigod cannons. Um, is this good? Bad? I don't, you know? We'll find out. Clip three. Dark magic, alicorn magic. See, see, somebody's getting somewhere. Hey, welcome to Pony DBZ edition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I appreciate this, but if that's the kind of firepower in an alicorn, you just cause the same level of destruction as Hiroshima. Well, that'd be four But this is the power the alicorns have in their bodies. Or is it in their bodies? I mean, she was able to survive a, probably a hundred mile impact into a mountain. A hundred and set, actually, you going frame by frame using uh, frame logic where you move X amount of feet per frame. Uh, she was moving at 126 miles per hour. And she survived the impact of the mountain. What he puts with magic, guys, is he does take magic, but he does use his... Tyric's a parasite. Tyric is a Tyric is a parasite with no innate magical ability himself. However, he can sap it from others. I actually yeah, went through and looked at that. Yeah. He does not have his own magic. Then how does he take the magic from other people? Because he's evolved to do it that way. Otherwise, without someone else giving it to him, he has no access to it. Which means the magic, to me, is not innately in their bodies. They're drawing it from somewhere else and channeling it. It's like he has mutational Next. So, Alicorn rules. They must be assigned to an element of Equestria to exist. Celestia is the sun. Luna is the moon. Cadence is love. Twilight is new. Cadence is relatively new, but more well developed than Twilight. Twilight is new, which means she has brought a new form of magic as well as a new form of alicorn into existence. And because the alicorns do essential jobs like raise the sun and raise the moon, you can't have an ecosystem without a day and night cycle in Equestria. That means they have to exist. This explains Flurry Heart to some degree. Because when Tyrix sapped all the magic out, they willingly gave their magic to Twilight, draining themselves, removing their element to some degree. And Equestria Magic's response because if you notice the very next season, guess what? We get Flurry Heart. So the response by the living entity of Equestrian Magic was, I need a replacement as quickly as possible. Because otherwise everything about what I am is going to fall apart. Theory is, Cadence was already pregnant at the time. She just didn't know yet. Women can actually go up to four months before they even know they're pregnant. That's a human woman. A horse, whom I had to actually raise and understand, uh, we as horse raisers would not know if a mare was pregnant for up to a month. So knowing that, she might not even, she probably didn't even realize it. And, the mag and since Tyrix magic required direct 
line of sight for him to sap someone. He can't see her. He doesn't know she exists. He doesn't initiate the ability to sap it from the baby. Uh, which brings us to clip four. Alicorn magic is weaker than fr friendship magic and discord's magic. And you have to have a lot of attention and focus to make it work. You can do this. Look how much effort this takes. You wonder why we don't see you wonder why we don't see Celestia and Luna a lot more? <laughs> Look at how much effort this takes! She doesn't have the practice. It's not just not having the practice. It's, it's taking her entire focus to do it starting out. Celestia and Luna still have to make an active, conscious decision to change the day-night cycle. Yeah, but isn't it, you know, the practice is still, didn't they say at one point that the unicorns used to be the sun and moon before the practice? Yeah. Like five yes, but it took many, many, many of them. Different levels of it say anywhere from five to a hundred were required to change the day-night cycle every day. And they had to give up their music. They had to give up their magic forever. Every day. That's insane. So, moving on. We have Discord magic. And believe it or not, it has rules. <laughs> Discord is not all powerful, it has rules. Unlike Alicorns, he, can't, he cannot affect things beyond his line of sight or beyond his sensory input. In addition to this, his magic is limited by his imagination. And no offense, Discord's imagination is pretty limited in comparison to what I could think of using that kind of all-powerful craziness. Mm -hmm. Clip six. Clip six. This is my lovely assistant, Arthur. He's one of my subscribers. Hi. And I need, uh, I need, I need a person to operate this. A uh, replacement. Replacement. There we go. So strange. We're here, and that's there. And I clearly meant for that's limits. It's there. It's affected by other things. Oh, I can probably explain Oh, it. well, if at first you don't succeed. <laughs> I've been trying to tell you. Nothing other than changeling magic works here. So, it can be affected, changed, and altered. He's not all powerful. He's not near godlike. He is more powerful than the alicorns because they require help to contain him. But again, he can't affect things that he can't do anything outside of his line of sight or his sensory input. And when he tries to go somewhere that's blocking him, he's actually stopped. He's limited by his imagination. Yes, he's very imaginative. Flying pig, I'll give you that one. That's pretty good. Glass of milk that you drink the glass instead of the milk, that's awesome. And then the milk explodes, which made me wonder, hmm. But he can get sick. He has all this magic, and he can get sick, and he can't just heal himself or undo it. What's going on there? And Discord's magic doesn't affect Pinkie Pie in the same way. <laughs> What's up with Pinkie Pie? She's Pinkie Pie. <laughs> However, Discord's magic is affected by friendship magic. Now the, the what? Go back. Oh, clip. Oh, clip. Yeah. What about changing magic? So, I mean, he's he's got an imagination to him, but it's still, I'd say, limited to like an eleven-year-old. <laughs> Although I will admit, um, I do not want to drink what's in that chocolate milk. He's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Not as wonderful as. Frank. But he can be absolutely shut down by friendship magic. As a matter of fact, we haven't found anything that can't be shut down by this. And the alicorns originally used the elements of harmony to contain him because the elements of harmony had not evolved to the point they could be used by a certain aspects. Plus, it could be that they're one element per person. Also, it can pretty much undo everything he's done. Okay, stop, stop. Back to the panel. <laughs> Alright, so that was clip six. Clip seven. Clip seven. Okay, Pinkie Pie Magic. I'm not going over this right now. It has its own panel. Sorry, Pinkie Pie, but you can have your own panel because you're just that crazy. Don't get all sad on me. 
Actually, I think you both approve. <laughs> see? See? Fabric of reality, Terry. She's that happy. Okay, so friendship magic has near godlike power that can end most problems. By the way, that's actually from the show. That's not friendship magic. That's Rainbow Dash by herself. <laughs> so, Cliff 9. Friendship magic is highly restricted. It can only be used in certain instances and only when all the elements that bring it together that cause it to form are in agreement, Cliff 9. But once they're in agreement, they are strictly here to restore a yin and yang-like balance, not completely destroy or overpower. Also, Orbital Friends are canon in about six seconds. How is this possible? You have no magic. I'm all right, Tyrion. I may have given you my Alicorn magic, but I carry with me the most powerful magic of all. She says it herself. <laughs> and if you notice, it doesn't kill him or annihilate him or remove him from existence, it only returns him to his natural state. Discord, it only freezes in stone. It doesn't take his powers away. It doesn't actually hurt him. He's still pretty much immortal as far as I can tell. Anytime friendship magic has been used, it only restores a yin and yang-like balance, much like a sick body seeking to return back to a state of being well. More importantly, there's something else going on here that we're going to get to. Next slide. Shoot. Is Equestrian Magic alive? Uh, what about dragons and stuff? Because it, it seems that like magic doesn't seem to affect dragons as much as others. I don't have the answer for that one yet because I don't have enough information. Next slide. So think about it for a moment. It acts like a body, it evolves, it changes, it mutates, it grows stronger, and you slowly start to realize <laughs> something's going on. Next slide. So it's ever-changing and evolving. Every time a unicorn uses it for a new purpose, the creation of a brand new form of magic, the integration of discord. So it's either doing one of two things as far as I can tell. It's either evolving to take on already existing larger threats, such as Tyrek, or when we get to King Sombra or Queen, Queen Crystal and so on, or it is actually creating more powerful entities to balance out the other side of it the ponies are, are having, meaning that the other creatures we see are linked to it. I don't know which one. I don't have enough information to tell if these threats already exist, or if it's creating new threats to try to balance out its body. But what I do know is Cadence, Twilight, and Flurry Heart have changed Alicorn magic, period. There's no doubt about that. Because we don't know what Flurry Heart's purpose is yet. We know Twilight and Cadence have created new magical elements in the last thousand years that did not exist before that, that are now permanently a part of Equestria, and it needs them to continue surviving. Much like Celestia is the brain, and Luna may be the heart, Twilight is now another body, is now another major organ, and Flurry Heart and Cadence are, are as well. Balancing in Equestria seems to have to happen. Every time the ponies create some new, more powerful form of magic to use, we see an evil who either balances it out, cancels it out, or tries to find a way to be more powerful than the ponies. So either the magic is evolving to take on existing threats, or it's creating the threats themselves to balance it out because the other magical entities are linked to this living entity itself. I can't tell if this thing is sentient or not. It seems to act on instinct. If a unicorn does X, it runs with it until it can't. If a alicorn does Y, it runs with it until it either can't or upsets it. But I, I'm kind of leaning towards it's, it's, it's an animal that's semi-sentient. It's kind of alive, it's kind of not and it's seeking a constant state of balance. But it requires magical users 
to evolve, grow, and live. It cannot do it on its own. Meaning, the relationship is symbiotic. Those using the magic gain a benefit, while at the same time, the use of the magic enhances the magical entity at the heart of Equestria. And as I spoke earlier, this theory explains Flurry Heart. With the removal of the alicorns, it suddenly needed the replacement for those elements for its individual magical body parts. Therefore, the embryo inside the Princess Cadence in this theory would state that it was immediately turned into an alicorn for that purpose. Because, quote, this has never happened. This isn't supposed to happen. This isn't how alicorns are made. And those are all quotes directly from the show. So, here we have different tiers of magic. We have key marks. We have unicorns. We have, Cad we have Cadence being thrown as the alicorn representation. <laughs> uh, we have Discord's explosive chocolate milk. Uh, Pinkie Pie is her own tier. Above all of that. Yeah. And uh, then we have Friendship Magic, which literally just says Firing Orbital Friendship Cannon. Uh, what about Love Magic? Well, that's, down that's, for real life. that's an Alcorn element. So you think that Shiny Arma and uh, Cadence together, that was all Cadence? Then? That was Shining. Uh, again, the magic exists for users to use it, and thereby enhancing it by their use of it. So it's a, it's, it's a circular... A symbiotic relationship. You use it, I gain, uh, it gets more powerful. I let you use more power, you get to do more stuff, I, I grow. Okay. And then what about changing magic? Next slide. So, uh, questions about this panel. If you don't want to ask the question in public, there is my business email address. I take about two or three days to respond. I will gladly answer it. Also, if you've missed any of my panels, I put up a science panel once a week on my YouTube channel, in addition to all my video games and other shenanigans I do. So, if you have missed anything, remember about once a week you'll see it on my YouTube channel. I have cards up here for you guys. In the meantime, I have, what, 10 minutes? I'm not sure. Talk about pink 25. Pies. Awesome. Uh, that's a separate panel tomorrow morning. Yeah. Holy crap, that's a lot of questions. Uh, I saw you first, so let's start with you. Can we talk about Twilight's ascension? She, when the elements were used against her, she wasn't just transformed into an alcorn. She was actually destroyed. Yes. Yeah. That's not a question. It's a statement, and, yeah. and I agree. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm gonna get to you next. I saw you first. All right. So in theory, for the whole friendship magic to kind of force uh, seek balance and yeah. make sure everything's equal. Friendship magic is there as kind of this entity's autoimmune system of I don't know what else to do other than just nuke it back to where it was. So metachlorian friendship metachlorian? No, uh, more like uh, your white blood cells on overdrive where it creates a special, where it's a super specialized super antibody that's just there to restore your body back to a status of being well and in balance. Uh, and your yeah, what about changelings in general? Because it's been shown that one, like in the latest, in the little last season, changeling, a changeling drone could kidnap and replace the princesses and it only took people realizing that's not how they act. I'm uh, still doing research on changes before uh, I form uh, a conclusive panel. But I have no real answer. As far as the changes go, like how you're saying that Tyrka, the uh, parasite, the, the changes probably uh, were a uh, threat evolved from from the love magic that Kings had, a parasite of that. That is a possibility. I saw a hand over here. I'm getting around the room as I see hands. What are your thoughts about what what uh, dark magic might be? Dark magic. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Um, so dark magic is the inverse effect in which you are not somehow relating back to the living entity. You're stripping it of its power and not benefiting it in the process. Like changelings. Like changelings where you're literally sucking it out and then not sending anything back or not maintaining a connection. Because you notice Earth Ponies have an innate connection to the Earth itself. Pegasi have an innate connection to the sky. Unicorns have an innate connection to a bunch of magical forces. It seems like they're all actually connecting to the same magical force just in different ways. But a dark magician is not reaching back to that magical force and sending back anything to, make, to evolve or make that magical force stronger it's instead literally walking up and just taking a chunk out of it and not, and not returning the favor. Uh, I think I saw you next. 
how would it factor in with the Celestia Vance and Luna? Would that have been friendship magic or owl's magic? Or dark. Dark. She would have had to rip a piece of Equestria's magic out to banish Luna, and she then had to control the moon while Luna was banished. So she, in fact, was tearing a piece of the body out, and that child is incredibly smart. You should give her a star. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what do you think of uh, that stuff in the Flowy Heart episode about like how there are spells that need various other things, like uh, the spell of constitution, and the more powerful version that to fix the crystal heart? What that is, is it's, you require something to create an object that's, inanim that's inanimate, and therefore has no will of its own to control the magic within it, so you have to basically design it to as a magical conduit, much like you would do an electrical circuit board, or like you would attempt to do with, say, an automotive engine. The engine needs to run on its own with no input. Uh, without that input, that means that it only has the, the magic placed in it, and cannot, and will give the magic only back out for its purpose. Um, it's neither dark nor nor is it light in the sense that it's not benefiting the the magical entity at the core of Equestria that's generating the magic, but it's not harming it either. Okay. Uh, I saw you first. I'm gonna get up here in a second. What about a uh, cutie mark manipulation magic, like in um, when Twilight fixed the cutie marks for her friends earlier, and when Starlight Glimmer was actually able to take away cutie marks? Like, cutie marks. Well, that is manipulating cutie mark magic itself, which is doable. It's completely doable. Cutie pox, uh, changing people's cutie marks, trying to change the past. Uh, time magic is obviously very, very, very unpredictable. But the point is that. It's a form of magic, and it's the lowest form of magic, which means other forms can easily manipulate it if given the right tools and access to it. But um, Starlight was able to manipulate uh, Celestia and Luna's uh, the kind of swap. Yeah. 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 I. Not quite sure how she did that yet, if I'm entirely honest. And as a scientist, I'm allowed, I, I, I can say this. As a scientist, this is a theory. I'm allowed to be wrong. Um, if you come up with a better theory, then I would love to hear it and I would love to research it. And I can also say, I don't have all the information. So I, I, I can't make a logical conclusion. Up here first. All right, so you kind of already answered it a little bit earlier, but it's considering Pegasi and Earth Holy Magic without the atonement here, considering that they. Um, Manipulate magic differently, and they seem to be on a different level, like lower than unicorns. To some degree, yes, but I wouldn't classify it as its own tier or level because, for the most part, as we saw with Tyrek, he had to attain a very high level of power before he could strip magic from Pegasi or Earth ponies, which indicates it's something innately within their genetic structure that allows them to manipulate that magic rather than a magic that can float in the air and be manipulated from outside forces without great difficulty. Uh, whoa, that's a lot more questions. So you first. Right, so, would you class dark magic as its own tier, separate from the main tree, or almost like a background layer? Because I would classify it neither. I would classify it in tandem. Dark magic of a unicorn is about the same level of power as dark magic of uh, as as regular magic of a of, an, of a unicorn using it. It depends upon what the user is using it for that classifies it light or dark. If you're using it in a way that's destroying magic or transforming it and not benefiting back to the body of magic itself, it's obviously dark and it's going to cause damage to the living entity. If you're using it for other, if you're using it for, say, I want to sew something or I want to teleport something from point A to point B, it's like flexing a muscle. It's the difference in I'm going to flex a muscle and, say, a cougar is going to take a chunk out of me to grow its own muscles. Okay, uh, so you first, and then the pink cat. Okay. Now, I don't think I've heard you mention the Tree of Harmony. Now, if you say the magic is alive, what would you say the Tree of Harmony is in relation to that? What the Tree of Harmony is, is the point of which, like a genetic mutation, starts. The Tree of Harmony starts the genetic mutation with creating the elements of harmony. Those elements of harmony don't have a purpose or direction or anything to go yet. They simply exist. 
requiring some sort of input or some sort of external power acting on them for them to evolve to use. So what that means is, is the tree of harmony starts out as just it happened. Much like any mutation in the wild or in human beings, you have a mutation. Your body has to figure out if it's useful or not and how to use it. I would say the tree of harmony is the closest thing we have access to for the magical entity in the core of Equestria itself. Think of it as a massive nerve ending that's poking out for sensory input. Uh, Pink hat. So, um, I'm going to kind of raise an objection to this whole level tier thing. Go ahead. And see what you think about it. So, like, let me preface this. I like this idea of like, sort of thinking of Equestria as sort of like a broader body which like has various kinds of each person's magic is part of this like bigger magic like encompasses all of how much your work. But these tier thing doesn't seem to work right to me. So first off, you've got all these outliers like changelings, uh, Reezy magic. Uh, oh. the, the, the case with uh, <coughs> cutting mark magic being able to change the entire nature of the world, right? So with Twilight spell and with like starlights like shifting, these, all these magics seem like they're they're able to sort of overpower other kinds of magic, vice versa. Uh, earth pony magic, like Pinkie Pie isn't the only earth pony with like weird earth pony powers that seem to break reality to create these. Uh, like each of these magics sort of is a part of is a story. It's a thing that like works. Each magic uh, does its own kind of thing. Electromagic does this thing that's like regulates the entire world, but there can be unicorn magic that can like fuck with them. It will mess it up. Uh, and so I don't see why we want to like rank any of these. Why do we say this is more powerful than that? But rather each of them sort of affects the world in their own kind of way. And the kind of way that Cutie Mark magic affects the world is sort of you know very sort of foundational, right? That it's each person's story. What is your story? How do you fit into the world? Uh, and so it doesn't sort of like look as big, except for when you can actually mess with it, when you can like take some of this key mark magic away and you can switch out the destiny. I looked at that as a possibility. The problem is the ones that cause things where they can mess with magic that should be more powerful for them seem to be exceptions or outliers themselves, whereas the normal everyday, the vast majority, don't seem to have that outlying power, which made me think about it really hard. And in addition to this, when I saw certain capabilities to take magic away from others and then the and then there was no reciprocate you couldn't do that back i began to wonder what was going on that was causing that shift now in theory we also see that as you mentioned starlight glimmer or somebody mentioned starlight glimmer switching alicorns uh cutie marks that got me thinking well twilight was really powerful with magic she became an oh god i know where this is going she became twilight became an alicorn through friendship and through development. So if Starlight Glimmer were to take that sort of power and find a way to make a brand new type of magic or a brand new type of magical element, I could imagine that she would send to an Alicorn, just as an example. But the point here being that the main examples I could give that would say that it's not there's not some sort of tier or, or change in it that creates a certain level of power um, over individual stories is because I see them as outliers in the system rather than as the mainstay of the system. So, just real quick follow-up, like, so the existence of any outlier, right, like, so this needs to be explained if you actually want it to be like, this is what's going on, right? No. Or, we can be like, well, why are we trying to rank them in the first place? Like, why, why do you feel the need to do this ranking? I feel the need to do the ranking to indicate what can affect each other, so that I can get an so I can get an indication in terms of can a unicorn do X? I don't know. Can the average unicorn or the random unicorn I pick on the street do X? No. Can an exceptional one do it? Maybe. Can an alicorn do that? Can Discord do that? And I have to figure out what they're actually capable of in order to determine what the magic rules are for that individual type of magic. So the ranking system is a clear way for me as a scientist to look and go, this is capable, this should be capable of this, this, and this. And if you have an exceptional person, say Captain America, he might be able to do this instead. 
then it sounds like you want to rank each individual magic rather than the classes, right? So Pinkie Pie is North Carolina, it maybe has North Carolina magic, but it's, it's like, like, her magic is super fucking powerful. No. And I can explain to you why in a minute, but I need to get to other questions. Uh, if you want to see me afterwards, you totally can. Uh, back down the back, and then the little girl. All right. So then, with you said French magic rebalances, uh, with Sombra exploding like out of oblivion, what was that? <laughs> I don't that know. I don't have enough information. I see Sombra for like. I, I see Sombra for like 20 minutes tops. Okay, let's just say Sombra is like a gem and that his horns like his gem. He's retreated to the gem. Right? The only thing I can tell is that Sombra has some sort of magical device or magical innateness to him, such as the Alicorn Amulet, for instance, to Trixie, that makes him exceptionally powerful so long as he has it. I would love to know what that shiny crown does and what that massive gem on his chest does, but I don't know. Little girl. Do you think Cheese Sandwich is on the same level of magic as Pinkie Pie or his own level? Neither. <laughs> cheese Sandwich, as far as I can tell, doesn't have any magic beyond what Earth Pony has. No. I watched that entire. The same things he shares with Pinkie Pie. He shares the same things with Pinkie Pie in the sense that he shares her flexibility and his ability and pulling out different devices, but he doesn't share things like he can. He can't. He doesn't. He never talks to the audience. Pinkie Pie literally talks to us and acknowledges we exist. Um, I think Twilight did that in one of Yeah, she did. Twilight talked to us once. 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 Um, but I don't think Cheese Sandwich has the same powers as Pinkie Pie. I think Cheese Sandwich has similar capabilities when it comes to providing entertainment or his cutie mark gives him access to certain things like pulling objects. Uh, out of places that they shouldn't fit into. But I don't <laughs> think that he actually has the same power she does. Because I don't have enough information to verify if he does or not. Mm -hmm. Up front first, and then guy in purple shirt. What about Ma? When she, like, when she said she had Ma sense in that one season six episode, then Pinkie would fight instead of going to the family. So. That's because it relates to Pinkie Pie, and I will explain that tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. I just want to add to the Sombra part. Actually, the comic series, which is alternate canon, but no. He's actually an umbra pony, so he's actually a dark magic pony. I knew that, but I still didn't have enough information to figure out what all he could do. Well, oh. kind of. He's not an umbra he himself. He's like an artificial construct. He's a Understand? I've watched the entire I've watched the entire series front to back for all of these panels about eight and a half times. <laughs> On top of the fact that I've read the entire comics front to back. Actually, I have printed versions of the of the official comics. That literally look like my uh, grad school my grad school books in which they have highlighter and circles and notes scribbled all over them, and they're basically unlegible at this point to anyone but me. Uh, little girl first, and guy in red. So, what about the actual shadow pony who we see in Castle Maine? What about that? I mean, isn't there some kind of magic to that particular? Yes, and I don't have enough information to explain it. Okay. Guy and Richard. Uh, about the uh, whole bleaching off of other magic forms, uh, sort of how changelings leech off of love, and in my own personal opinion, wouldn't Wendigos also be leeching off of hatred and that form of yes. dark magic? Do you think there will be something that will eventually start feeding on friendship magic? Yes. I have a theory for that, but I can't prove it yet. What about zebras and zebra magic? Uh, zebras and zebra magic is actually just innate magic in all items in Equestria, which is why I began to formulate that Equestria magic was living and breathing and permeated everything. Because Zakora can do a lot of stuff, but Zakora does it by a recipe book. Anybody can pick up that book and do it. Because Zakora did stuff, Twilight was like, what? Which, mean, which, which means that that type of magic is not just only... Zakora has special knowledge of it because she's been trained in it, but it means anybody can be trained for that type of magical capability oh. and just use the items around them to form a magical so, sense, which is why I think it permeates. She does seem to have a mark or a tribal thing. Yes. And you didn't mention that only ponies can have it, but Zakora is not a pony. No. Zakora is a pony. 
magic. Well, so, so what about siren magic? Did you take that into account at all? No. <laughs> Not enough information. That would more than likely be dark magic. There's a, there, there's a lot of different things that come up that I'm like, okay, it came up once or twice. I don't have enough information. I can't do anything with this. There's literally too little pieces to put together to formulate into any part of a theory to understand how it works. Um, I could figure out a little bit of what they do. I could compare them to something I have more information of. But at that point, I'm using circumstantial evidence and supposition rather than using a contextual evidence and circumstantial evidence plus supposition. And without the contextual evidence that I can feel, see, interact with, it becomes very, very, uh, how should I put this? It becomes beyond theoretical, it becomes purely speculative. I mean, they do feed off of the, uh, the competition and also disarming. Yes. But, so the, uh, That's all I know. Uh, what about Tartarus in general? Is that just like a special place? Portrait, it's up made this door. Danger or something? Yes, that is a special place that a quest that was made and designed. I'm not sure if the Alicorns made it or if Equestria itself made it. That is designed to contain things that have been created by the constant mutation of the magic around it. That is like, I don't know what to do with this, it doesn't belong. Shove it over here until I figure it out. Okay, because then that's a good point, like to, to, to compare this, it's like uh, lymph nodes and cancer cells. Mm -hmm. We all have cancer cells, by the way. Some of them are active, some of them are not. When you get a tumor is when you have active cancer cells. But lymph nodes actually suppress cancer cells. So think of Cerberus as a giant lymph node and the Tartarus as the place in which it's holding all the cancer cells until the body can figure out if they, they have a use or not that can actually be tangible and yeah. mutates to use it. The question is kidney. Yes. <laughs> yes. Do you think PewDiePie is evil? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Little girl's going to date. Uh, chaotic neutral. Uh, I'm going to have to actually say yes, but I can't explain why yet. Pinkie Pie has permeated all of your panels with their magic. So, chaotic neutral or chaotic evil? Neither. It's worse. How did she unleash her I mean, I know the book says that she helps us put it together and how much love less or something, but I think Just like Twilight had to evolve, had to had to mutate her in, with enough magical energy, as love became a more inspiring source of magic due to the due to the removal of discord and the imprisonment of Luna, that resulted in the element getting strong enough that it could form an alicorn to create a permanent part of the body that was required for the uh, magical entity that exists within that permeates Equestria at this point to continue existing because it went hey. I can use this to grow to grow stronger and grow larger and create more uh, elements of magic that I can interact with. Uh, you there with the glasses first. Um, I actually wanted to, to comment on uh, the on love magic and and the Crystal Empire in general. The Crystal Empire existed a thousand years ago, and the Crystal Heart existed. Yes. And then it was banished. Yes. Cadence came into being as a conduit for the magic of the Crystal Heart as the entity of magic realized that we're going to come back. So she's just the natural progression. She yes. needed something to fill the void to control the magic. Not, not that Cadence became an owl for a great reason. She just, she, she was predestined to, to Predestined in a way, but not predestined in the way that she couldn't have had it taken away from her and someone else taken her place. As with the cutie marks, you're, pre you're predestined to have one. What that is and how it works can change over time, or you aren't guaranteed to get the one you want. You still have your actions and how you interact with others as well as how you interact with the magical entity itself before it decides what you're going to get and what your purpose is. Little girl. Do you think Mod Pie is a zombie? <laughs> <laughs> no, Mod Pie is alive. She's fine. She's not necromantic. Although I have a. Th 
Mod Pie's current depressive state is not just the opposite of Pinkie Pie, but her lack of expression is a res direct result of Pinkie Pie. Sensory overlord. Okay, any other questions? I'm going to take one more, and then I think the next panel would love to set up, because uh, I ran over last night, and I don't want to do it again. Anybody? Go once, go twice. You right there, you get the last question. Um, what about, I'm going off of an older gen, uh, what about like stuff like uh, goats? Like, there's a necromancer goat in there. I don't know. Well, Grogar is mentioned in a fantasy. He's mentioned in a fantasy book. He's specifically in the book of the Twilight Sentence of the Little Girl. And he's like a classic. I'll have to research that. So he's a fictional character. So if you want to know about Pinkie Pie, uh, tomorrow at 9 a.m., I'm doing the panel on Pinkie Pie to explain her with science. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Uh, I am also in the vendor hall at table 46 representing BabsCon. I have nine science panels designed for bronies this year. One of them is only being presented at BabsCon, and I'm allowed to announce it as of this morning. It is the physics of My Little Pony. Ooh. Yeah. I heard Pinkie Pie science in the same sentence, or MLP in physics in the same sentence, so that's a first. So uh, all nine of them will also be presented at BabsCon. I'm presenting various ones at different conventions based on the ones they want me to bring. But uh, I hope to see you guys later today in the vendor hall, and I hope to see all of you tomorrow morning. Again, if you if you miss any of them, they will be on my YouTube channel after they are presented at a con. Or if you have a question that you don't want to ask publicly or, or are afraid to ask, you can send it to my email address right here on the screen. I also have cards for you guys up here while the uh, next panel sets up. And I will hang out for 10 minutes in the hall if you have other questions. Great job. I think it's still happy.